bit about my process before I start. Um, I'm you know influenced by abstract expressionism, influenced by people like you know, Jackson Pollock, Mark Rothko, um, which probably come to mind, but then people like Gerhard Richter, Hans Hoffman, Stephen Korn. Um, kind of that whole movement from, as you know, like the late 40s. And what I kind of do is, it's kind of a combination between the action painting, where you might be familiar with Jackson Pollock as an action painter. You know. Louder. <laughs> Sorry. I'll do this part like this. Um, uh, as I was saying, it's, more, it's a combination of action painting and color field painting. So what I start off with, with this more uh, rough early layer, is a combination of various colors, various random spontaneity in the strokes. And uh, what happens is, as I continue to work on the piece, uh, it turns into more like a color field painting. But what you have underneath is the action and the energy of those first layers. So um, the end result is more like an abstract landscape, though I do some like all over color fields, that would be the entire canvas, one color. Um, for this piece tonight, uh, I'm gonna do it as a landscape, and the first layer I'm gonna do now on the bottom half of this, I'm going to use uh, a shoe palette knife, which I invented. Copyright. Um, so these are like more like a joint knife than um, than an artist palette knife. I don't go to uh, Dick Blake, I go to Home Depot. Um, so what I did here is I, I duct taped it to the shoe and what, what I was really trying to accomplish was getting that palette knife flat against the canvas and then uh, really scraping the acrylic and uh, I also use pumice as a texture medium on the first layer. So, what um, what really helped in that is rather than using your arm like this, this is an awkward thing to do, I think. So, rather than that, flat down and scraping with my leg just made more sense to me. Uh, so, again, it was challenging how the body. Uh, reacts to the surface. Um, I stopped using a brush about 2005. I don't use brushes ever. So it, it migrated to this, which I still use, and I'll do it in the second half tonight on the upper part of the canvas. And then from there, it's kind of transitioned to um, working with the feet on the canvas. So I'm just going to start. Um, I, I put the paint right on the canvas. I never mix outside of the canvas to get a certain color and put it down. If I want to hit a color, I have to mix it on the canvas. Um, <clears throat> and this horizon line, if we can shoot the painting, this is actually dried um, paint from these palette knives. So when I do this process, what I do is, basically that's the first step. What I did is I took these dried uh, uh, paint skins, I guess is what I call them, from the palette knife and I used a matte gel to create just an approximate straight line for a horizon line. And then I worked with the shoe on both sides of this with various paint and uh, the pumice. So now I'm gonna put down different, I'm gonna put down different greens down here, maybe a little bit of blues. And I'm just gonna start working it with, uh, with the shoe. So let's do that. So if you put the shoe on? Yes, yes Where? I hear. I wear it, yeah. After I put the paint down, I'll put the shoe on. Wait until you see his body painting. Like various brands. Uh, this is the thicker Liquitex. <coughs> and then I have the thinner, like the thinner um, basic Liquitex, and then I, I have some of the Dick White.
You know, I think it might be better if we had the lights on. Lights on? Yeah. Yeah, because we don't have a light on that. It looks really nice. Huh? It looks pretty good. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, it's a little dark. Peace. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, I think the... Uh, there we go. Yeah. Oh. No, I actually like the give, uh, the give of kind of like the stretch canvas because I don't want it to be a hard surface because I get different textures if there's more of a give to it. So how do you work on a larger canvas then? It's tricky. <laughs> <laughs> do you sit down for some of this? No. Never. Nope. I just get the larger canvas, I go out as far as I can and bring it in. And then with like a five by five foot, I mean, I can't get the center, so I don't do the center with the foot. So like, you know, I'm seeing things right away that I like, like this, but I might have to work over it. I might lose it. Yeah, I actually started the shoe idea. I was doing a 20 canvas commission for a country club in Michigan. And to re meet the deadline, I had to basically do four at a time. And so I started them on the floor, and that's when I had the idea. That was about a year ago. Patent pending? That's right, patent pending.
Yeah, I usually always have music going when I'm working. How did you do the underpainting? Same way? Same way, with uh, more variety of color and with that pumice uh, texture. Could you explain pumice to us? Sure, pumice, it's sold as an art medium, like, like a gel, but it's um, like rocky. It's soft when you apply it, but it dries like a rocky surface. Oh, okay. So it is like the same pumice as like a pumice stone. But it's it's a soft, you know, and then it, it hardens after you apply it. And you, you technically you usually mix it with acrylic. You don't have to, but if you don't, it's a it's a gray color. So did you mix it first? Did you mix it or did you? Um, I I put it down along with the paint. So as I'm using the foot, some of them mix together, some of them don't. But I don't uh, pre mix it with the acrylic. You thin it down at all? Or? Nope. I never had uh, I never had water. <coughs> uh, typically in my work you'll see most of the action in the center and on the edges. So these things that I'm leaving here on the sides I'm pretty happy with. Um, I am going to take off the shoe. I want to scrape this down to see what's underneath in, in kind of those thicker parts on the left and the right. You can't start working under the mirror? No. Um, I'll just, I'll just usually do this part of the floor cells. So. How old are you anyway? 36. <laughs> All right, girl. 36. Three more years. I didn't think they'd come that young. <laughs> huh? This one? Well, oh, thank you very much. you paint the entire canvas black underneath? I actually get these canvases, uh, they come black from the person that makes them for me. I also work on white. I've actually been trying out the black, though, for about the last five paintings. So this is a technique that I do called scuffling, which I'll do more on the table. Essentially, it's scraping. What? Is the paint still wet enough? Yeah, it's starting to dry a little bit. It's about halfway. That's kind of a time when I like to to scrape and see what I can get underneath. It's just not really good.
John, is there pumice in the paint you're currently pulling around? No, there's only dried pumice underneath. questions at this point? I mean, I'm kind of at a stopping point for this half of it. Um, I could continue. Let's see what's going on. So how big, do you buy big gallons of that pumice then? Unfortunately, they don't make it in large sizes, though I've asked for it. Um, they come in about you know, that kind of a jar. I don't know, 32 ounce, yeah. maybe. I think they have it I usually get the Utrecht kind. I think uh, Golden makes it, and I think they make a big size, which I, I could order, I just haven't. Part of it is, it gets kind of, it gets less soft, like, it can kind of half dry in, inside of the jar, and then it gets harder to work with, so it's almost easier to use the smaller 32 ounce. I go through them really fast, but, um, Varnish of matte varnish down, which would be like a, a similar thing, really, but it's more of a varnish than a gel. So, in the, yeah, in this piece, that was the first step. This line, and this is all collage right here, but it's dried paint, so it's it's collage, but it's also paint. It's kind of uh, you can look at it both ways, I guess. I used to use collage, <coughs> newsprint, um, found object stuff, 